Alrighty guys, uh, I've been waiting to do this video for a while, but uh, it's going to be a very simple. Um, so, the basic thing we're going to learn how to do here is how to breed your own roaches. Um, now, if you don't know this already, um, these are called Blaptica dubia roaches. These roaches, let's put it this way. It's like feeding your lizard, or whatever you're feeding it to. It's like feeding them a steak versus bologna. Crickets are like bologna to these guys. So, like, I mean, why would you go with something that, you know, really is a hassle uh, versus something that's like this? That's really easy to work with. Crickets, the first thing I don't like about crickets is, one, they're hard to catch. You reach your hand in there, and the first thing they do is they just jump all over the place. They get out. They stink. Um, when they die, they stink the worst. They still stink otherwise. They make sounds, and they're ridiculous to clean up. They're just um, the messiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, this is how to breed your own Blaptica dubia roaches. And, uh, basically... These guys are a lot more expensive, but they're well worth it. You can start your own colony of these guys and save hundreds of dollars versus crickets that are such a hassle. Um, but for your Blaptica dubias, um, we're just going to call them dubias. They're just like crickets in a, in a sense where, um, you know, they're, you don't want to put them in a tank because the silicone edges that they use to seal up the, the corners of them, they'll get up and they'll kind of crawl up that because it's got grip to them. To reinforce in a plastic tub, they cannot climb up plastic, plastic, sorry I can't talk today. All you gotta do is just put some packing tape around it. That'll completely ensure that they're not gonna get out. There's no way that they can get out. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need is gonna be like a 15 quart bin. Um, this is just for a starter colony. If you have, you can start out with like 12 roaches that are adults. Um, you know, start out with 12. If you really want to go crazy, you can start out with 50. But I, the best thing to do is to start out with 12. Um, less expensive and more efficient. Um, so 15 quart for a colony. Um, nothing smaller than this because they're going to feel crowded. Um, it's not really going to fit. And then a lid that's latchable. And also, you just want to poke some holes in the top, probably like 30 holes. This is 30 holes, and what I took with this is I just took a screwdriver and jammed it in as hard as I could. Just like that. Another way you could do it is you can push on it like this, and it pops in there. It's either way. So, this is another thing you're going to need for them. Um... Dubias typically end up trampling themselves a lot because they're they're like crazy when they walk on each other. So you need some sort of thing they can you know go around on. Cheapest and easiest thing to do is an egg carton. Now I know this looks different. This isn't a paper egg carton. This is a styrofoam egg carton. This is just to kind of do for a couple of weeks, and then I'll go get some paper egg cartons. But this is just a little bit of a change here. And then the lid. Um, this is 12 large eggs. I just put this right here, kind of tilt it up so they can go, you know, wherever they please on there. And it just kind of gives them a variety they can climb on. That's what I recommend you doing with paper, of course. Uh, the paper milk cartons, or the egg, egg cartons. For food, um, this confused a lot of people. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and go into a little bit of detail about it. For food, you really don't need to feed them, like you would a bearded dragon or crickets even they're actually really simple to feed um they can eat what crickets eat um but i just crush up a bunch of dog food like this i crush up a good amount of dog food um uh, make sure it's nice and crushed like this as you can see i've used an old um cap to a jar a glass jar and that would work for an adult dubia perfectly. The babies come on here and feed. You can use cat food. Um, you can use like bananas and stuff, but those rot. 
and they're not really good, this will last them a while. So this is good. Um, you do want to make it fresh like once every two weeks. You want to crush up some more dog food. But a, a, like a huge bag of dog food will last you, last you a whole, whole bunch of time. This is just like a, a few, this is probably about 20, 20 crush up things. Like it's not at all that much. And it gives you so much to work with there. So cat food, dog food. Um, you can use some sort of cricket food. You can use even bearded dragon food. You can use, um, I mean, there's a wide variety of things. You could ask other people on YouTube. I mean, I really am not an expert on what they can eat. I just use crushed up dog food. I also give them a variety. Like, sometimes I give them cat food. Sometimes I give them dog food. Sometimes I give them other kinds of dog food. It really just is your kind of, uh, I don't know, it's just really what you prefer, um, and what's the cheapest for you. Um, and then for water, this is what confuses a lot of people, um, dubia roaches, uh, you can't put in standing water, because if you put in standing water, they're just going to drown. That's exactly with crickets. You need some sort of water source that they can drink off of, um, which is... I just grabbed the lid here too of my air, one of my airsoft um, one of my airsoft containers of BBs, and um, all you all I did was I took a half piece of paper towel, I folded it up and put it in there. Now after you do that, you can spray it, get it really moist, and then put it in there. That's all you got to do. Um, it just gives them a moist area area where they can go and drink off of. It helps a lot, and it looks. Um, not bad. Uh, you just make sure you keep it moist. And you don't put it on. Um, well, I'll explain that here in a second. But um, you can also use cricket drink, which is just like these these water gels. I really prefer not to use that because one, you run out of them really easily, and two, it's a lot harder to deal with, um, and it's more expensive. So this is the easier and cheapest way to go as far as drinking goes. Um, and then another thing is temperature. Um, the first thing you want to make sure of is that you're not having any light in there. Um, the reason they don't like light, I don't know exactly why, but they don't like it because um, it just they like to be in dark areas. Um, also, it has to be around 85 to 90 degrees in one side or in, in an area in order for them to breed. There's something that's wrong with the temperature, they won't breed. So you have to make sure that you have a right temperature in there. You can use heating pads, you can use like, like, um, not heat lamps, but try and go buy a cheap, cheap, cheap heating pad or like some sort of something that's like not too, you know, expensive or something like that. But really, this is a basic setup for doobie roaches. Snap on the lid, you get 12 roaches in there. You want to wait a couple, uh, I'm going to say probably a week without messing with them at all. Don't look at them. Don't go mess with them. Let them do their thing. Put them in a nice dark corner. Um, and they should be breeding right then and there. Um, it'll take her a little bit. They do do live birth. So you don't have to worry about anything with, you know, egg laying or anything. So it's really, they're really nice. Um, so much more protein. You feed them two of these, it's like feeding them 24 crickets. So, really cost efficient here. It's really saving you money. And I'm, this is my breeding project right here for um, a couple months. I'm going to be working on breeding these guys. Don't have them yet. I'm hopefully going to get them at my local pet store. But, yeah, completely um, cost efficient. And I totally recommend getting some of these roaches and starting your own colony. Um, if they do end up getting out of your house, all you got to do... Um, it, all you gotta do is spray pesticides around your house. It'll kill them. Another thing is, just really quick, you don't want to leave like thousands of them in your room with them because they can cause you upper respiratory problems. So if you have a hundred of them or so, it's not really going to cause you as bad upper respiratory problems as it is if you have thousands of them. So just make sure you're aware of that before you go out and buy these guys. Um, very cost efficient and I totally recommend these guys. So, um, be sure to start up your own colony, and I uh, hope you guys like this video. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for watching.